All right. Hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in on this fine Friday evening. It's Memorial Weekend. Um, welcome to Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community, where tattooers, apprentices, collectors, and the curious are encouraged to join in these live events where we stream, we have real world events, we share and inspire, and ultimately our goal is to create better art and tattoos together every day. You're currently watching a Raw Pigments feature with Michael Biller. Um, you can find on-demand reruns in our library. Uh, we've got tons of art and tattoo rabbit holes. So this show that you're watching now, art jams, drawing groups, interviews, panels, webinars, and we're beaming out three to seven awesome shows a week. It can be found right here in your library. Now, this cool community that we have here for reinventing is something new that started this year by Guy and Gabe Ripley. Um, you can find it at community.reinventingthetattoo.com. You can also find their free mobile app and in either the Apple or Google Play. So that's been really cool. It's like a whole new social media source, but not. It's with people that you actually care about. No ads. Um, a lot of learning. So that brings me to our next thing. We do have really cool weekly events that are happening. Um, we've got Jason Lesser every Sunday at 1 p.m. He does a reinventing drawing group. Um, all skills are welcome. He does all sorts of stuff. Um, it's a really great way to communicate with other artists. You can bring something that you're working on for the week or um, you know, just talk with other people. We also have Jake Meeks of our Fireside Tattoo Network, uh, affiliate of ours here at Re Reinventing. Every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, he has his Reinventing Drawing Group as well. Also, every Thursday at noon, you can find Fawn Baker and Jordan Ruckus with the Tattoo Collecting Podcast, which is really cool. And if you have any doubts about aliens, you should also watch that podcast. So um, other than that, we want to really thank um, the sponsors, which Raw Pigments does sponsor this app. And or this uh this community. And as part of that, we do have live streaming. Um, so we brought in one of our artists from the Raw Pigments team, Michael Biller. And Michael Biller is based in Palm Coast, Florida, which is a beautiful area um, in the southern United States where it's beautiful most of the year. I myself live in the frigid tundra. So it, it, it's always great to talk to Michael. And um, before we get started. I will say we also have James, the owner of Raw Pigments here as well, and he'll be jumping in in a few minutes with us. What's going on, Mike? What's going on? Thank from, you so much. All the way from Palm Coast, Florida. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, I mean, we've just been kind of on the on the line talking for the last, you know, half hour about all sorts of stuff, which is kind of a regular thing now. Um, uh, Michael, I'm just curious for those those um, who are watching who don't know you, can you kind of tell us who you are, a little bit about your story when you started tattooing? I'd love to hear myself again. <laughs> All right. Um, basically, I uh, own a shop here in Palm Coast, Florida, Devoted Tattoo Studio. Uh, we opened up in uh, 2013. Um, we host uh, about nine artists, including myself. We work on our own aftercare, our own clothing brand. Um, I myself, we uh, I started tattooing in like 2007. Just, uh, you know, self-taught, trying to get like the best knowledge I could. Um, hooked up with uh, good artists along the way and just, you know, progressed. Right on. I think I met you, uh, let's see, maybe 2014. Um, but later, I will have to say that your um, determination and motivation is unlike many people I've met before. So you guys, uh, back in... 20 something at the New York, uh, state tattoo expo. Um, I actually met Mike for the first time. He drove straight from Florida to be around other artists that were influential. That was, uh, super cool for me to see. And, um, it really was a pretty amazing convention, which is something I know that we all miss, but, um, you said you have nine artists at your studio. Um, right on. Uh, that convention, uh, was definitely a, uh, one to remember. That, that was just like spur a moment. Let's get a rental car, drive up to New York from Florida. One straight trip along the way. Our rental car like broke down and some some stuff happened with the fuel sensor and just had a big uh, story afterwards after we left you guys. But uh, it, it was definitely a fun weekend. Yeah, that, that was, uh, I always love going to New York and I know the show, um, they do have the Golden State Tattoo Expo as well if you ever want to do another cross-country tech track we'll be doing that one i'm down for sure yeah so uh you also mentioned your aftercare which we've spoken about 
uh, quite a few times. Um, it actually came about by your twin boys. Yep. What's that all about? So I have two twins. Um, I, have, I have four boys in total. Um, but my last my last uh, birth was twins, and uh, one of them, uh, Donovan, has uh, eczema, and uh, we couldn't cure it. We couldn't kick it. And I was just basically a, a mad chemist here in the, in the, in the studio and uh, started putting together like all natural ingredients. And I figured out that um, basically the same healing bomb that he could use is what we could use for tattoos as well. Just been producing it and, uh, and using it, you know, for a couple of years now. Um, it actually helped him out a lot. And uh, it actually helps out you know, with healing tattoos as well. Very cool. Yeah, that's it right there, yeah. Uh yeah, like I said, you're you're an exceptionally motivated uh, person, I must say. So you've got your uh, devoted brand as well. Yes. And um, if you don't mind sharing with everybody, do you make? How do you uh, come up with your designs? Or you know, sometimes you'll be wearing some pretty cool shirts and unique things that I've I've never seen anywhere. Awesome. Thank you. Um, basically, just you know, we're we're all artists. We're all creators. Um, so like, if I'm not tattooing. I'm drawing, I'm not drawing, I'm tattooing, you know, or trying to be a father or a husband, you know, but like, um, I'll come up with ideas, you know, place them on, on uh, you know, on Procreate or the, or the Illustrator. And then actually in the studio, we have all the capabilities to make shirts here. So we just print them and press them and, you know, have fun with it. Yeah. Like, what are some of, the, what are some of the shirts that you like the most? I'm trying to remember the, the one that I have a picture of you wearing, but, um, for I example, have, to believe in oneself, just like some motivational stuff, you know, I tried to like empower like, you know, the youth and, you know, uh, anyone, any, anybody in any walk of life. Um, there's believe in oneself. There's, um, what's the one we just released? I just, I, I drew a blank now. <laughs> Me too. I guess like the nerves of being on camera, but you know, I guess that's something you do get used to. But yeah, that's, that's, that's super cool because um, not only do you have capabilities to print right in your studio but you also could be making stickers and all sorts of stuff can you tell like how did that thought come about because that's a pretty big investment to be to be going into but it, it's it's like a playground for the creative to be able to make stickers and shirts you know well I, with the aftercare like i have some aftercare here um all this all the labels that i get i have to you know outsource and if, if they send me a bad batch, then, you know, I could try and haggle with them and, you know, get a right batch. It's just, it's all, it's all about time, you know? And like, it's good to like be able to afford to buy products, but if you can make them and save that time, you know, that's, that's why I figured like, there's gotta be an easier way. And uh, we, we've, we've got our own, our own labels for like, you know, our soap um, for, you know, artist stickers and that kind of stuff. So we figured, you know, let's, let's do everything here in house and not, not wait on someone else. And, you know, cause I, I use, a couple of good companies but like you know they're across the country so yeah wait for shipping time processing time and i can make the sticker here in house have printed the same day you know it's just easier more cost effective you know plus we're, yeah, we're all, I mean, all go 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 you know we want to get right our hands right away you know not not wait for you know ups or whatever else but yeah those are some strong capabilities that we're not talking like a, a sticker machine like this no, no. How, how do you, uh, you know, make room in your studio for something that size that could that can handle banners and? Well, well, luckily we have about three thousand square feet of space here, so I uh, just got very fortunate. You know, started off with a thousand square feet and just added on, and uh, we have we have what ten artist booths, uh, each around eight by eight, so we have plenty of floor space for our little digital playground. You know, so. Like right now, I'm in the back room where we do all the all the pressing and shipping, you know. So it's just we just have we're lucky enough to have the amount of space to just accommodate the equipment and the talent. Yeah, for sure. So um, yeah, it would be cool to do like a contest with you guys sometime to see like because you could you have such an a, a, the capacity to do it, and I've never really seen a tattoo studio do that. It's just pretty fun, you know. It's uh, it's a little stressful. <laughs> it gets it gets to be a little crazy. Yeah, a little crazy, you know, a lot, a lot of late nights, but you know, uh, it, it's, it's worth, it's worth it. You know, like you, you, you get to, you get, it's that instant gratification, you know, you, you, you make something and then you see somebody wear it, not just in their skin, but on their body, you know, like 
you see someone's car driving around with, with like, you know, with a raw pigment sticker on it. It's like, you know, or like their iPad case has like, you know, someone's sticker on it, their products that they like to use. It's just, it's to me that that's like, you know, that that's awesome. You know, just, you know very appreciative of all that. I hear you. I haven't seen any raw stickers in the wild, but you know. <laughs> I'll take out my iPad for you then. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's... <laughs> But yeah, I also want to show you guys some of um, Michael's work if you haven't seen. So I would say strongly, predominantly black and gray, but of course you love colors. Yes, yeah. Black and gray is just fun. And like, I don't, I don't want to sound, you know, redundant. I mean, you and I have spoken a lot about it, but like the uh, the gray wash that, that Brawl makes just makes tattooing fun. Like the white wash itself, is just like the flowers you just went by, like any of the flowers actually, like that's just easy it's just it, it's it's like butter you know so it's just it, it it's just fun fun to play with fun to do speaking of actually um is this okay here we go i wanted to show this let me yeah, make sure it. It. do you want to see pull it up, up, so. yeah i do if if that's a possibility yeah let, let me uh can i leave the camera real quick sure all right Not zoom in. Oh. All right, sorry. It's okay. Let me hop back to you. Is a uh... all right. Let me get you. Sweet. This is gonna be cool. Okay. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Everything is. All right, let's let's see. All right, so this is Lance. Lance is uh my my shop manager, apprentice, tattoo artist, you know, friend, designer extraordinaire, helps out with uh the stickers, the printing, the processing, but he's ah. also the guy that has the uh healed tattoo on him. If you want to get closer, can we get it closer? Yeah, it looks yeah. Okay. I lost your video feed though. Yeah, I turned it off just so we can see uh see this nice and big. Gotcha. So that's all black. Uh, so all mamba black in the exactly background. Exactly where you think through this, if you don't mind, like kind of pointing out some of the colors and the blacks that you chose. And the, the black is the, the mamba black, um, and then all the all the colors are. Uh, I can I talk about the colors? Yeah, let's give it a couple of minutes first. Let's first touch on the black to make sure that James is here, and um, I know that he's going to be really interesting to talk to about like how you you know, how you came up with which colors and stuff like that. So um, colors are unreleased black. just yet. Yeah, exactly. The the black that you used in here. Yes, it's the Mamba black. Mamba black. What do you like about that black in particular? Because that's the newest one that we've um, formulated at RAW. It, it is it is rich and solid. This is one pass. This is just one session by the elbow. Everything just in there nice and solid. Didn't didn't give us any any problems. You know, it's just like, like I said, just like with the whitewash, just like butter, right in. Right on. Uh, and for, that the lining, for the lining, though, I did I did use the lining um, black from from raw, so that that helps out a lot when you have a uh, a, a more um, not as concentrated black as the mamba black. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, for all the lining, I just use a uh, you know the lining black. Right on. And um, when we spoke about it initially, I, of course, I was, you know, um, I was watching some videos of it done and stuff like that. But um, what can you say about like the inks going into the skin from your perspective and how they healed in particular? Um, so, so raw pigments, when, when you, when you use raw pigments, uh, it's like, it's, it's, it's instant. You, you hit, you, when the needle hits the skin, it goes, it goes right in, goes in solid. You don't have to sit there and, and dilute any of your ink in your caps. Um, every every color is just the right consistency. You know, um, it's, like I said, I assume, like this is all just one hit. If you still see his arm, it's all one hit, one pass, no touch ups. You know, some spots we might have to because just you know normal wear and tear. But everything like you see is what you get. Like the the green and the leaves, that's that's all just one hit. It's poor video. Wish I had better video for you. 
No, that's okay. We can, um, I'm sure you'll post pictures online and stuff like that too, if you haven't already. It's just uh, like normally with other, other brands, like if, if you're doing a longer tattoo, some colors will tend to like dry up in the ink caps or some colors will just be really messy. Um, but with, with raw, like it, it stays, cause it stays wet. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know, skimming off like, you know, a skin layer on your cap, you know, it just, it's, it's very easy, easy to use. Awesome. Now I am going to see, let's see if James is here. Yeah. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Let me start your video so everybody can say hi. And, um, you know, we were talking about Michael, did a little bit of an intro so far. And I think like a good topic of conversation now would be, um, we're talking about the, the pigments. Let's see. Absolutely. So first of all, James, um, I got to say, I, you know, I work with you. I love talking to you. The, the business um, aspect of raw pigments has been a lot of fun over the last six months, but I can't even begin to tap what you know about pigment in general, which has been like just one of the most um, eye-opening eye experiences, I would say. I really appreciate all the knowledge you've shared with me. So thank you for that. And, and Michael as well, the three of us have been working together um, for you guys who are watching. We've been working together for uh, several months, um, kind of and going back and forth, bouncing on ideas and, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So I'm going to hop off the video. And yeah, James, I'd love to hear a, like just a few things about the process. And maybe Michael can show show as like a sneak peek some of the colors that we're working on. Well, or just, uh, just uh, to begin with... Um, we um so to make the colors it's a lot it's a long process it kind of goes from um it starts in powder form you know, a lot of people don't know um the way it, i mean they start they make it by producing it into powder form and then in powder form once you get in powder form then you got to make it a liquid form so then that's how all the companies out there like any company you know, star bright solid eternal any of the com our competitors are are uh, other mutual um, ink manufacturers, they all buy it in liquid form. Nobody buys it in raw, um, raw dry powder form. You know, um, we we actually um, are unique in the fact that we can um, we do both. We buy it in powder and and liquid form, which I would say is makes us very very unique compared to the majority of the um, tattoo ink manufacturers in the world. There, I'm sure there's a few other that are similar to us. I don't, I don't want to make a false statement and say we're the only ones, but um, we are, I could probably say that we are the only ones that make every single product from um, um, powder. You know, we, we, um, we actually mill, we have a 14 uh, sand mills. We have a couple basket mills. We have uh, ball mills. Um, which ball mills are made for just making black. Um, so that's just a little bit of knowledge uh, and a little bit of history of, of the capacity that we have at our factory and our facility to where most of the guys that make the inks, they are, are more worried about the percentages of each color that they, each liquid dispersion that they add to the finished product. They don't even have to worry about the aspects that we, we, we have to worry about, like the, the powder, sourcing the powder, where to get the powder from, what parts of the world does this powder come from, the thalo blue. Um, it's funny, I always see people in the um, ink industry, the thalo blue, P, a word spelled P-H-T-H-A-L-O. I mean, how would you pronounce that? No, nobody knows how to pronounce that word, you know? And it's funny when you, when you, when you get people out there that are um, pitha, uh, pitha, that, and it's thalo blue, thalo green, and it, it's it, it just it's comical to hear um, people try to um, pronounce that, that word. There's a there's a few of them out there: quinacridone, you know, carbazol. Um, um, there's just a few. There's a few um, tricky. Um, um, like I said, quinacridone is a good one. Um, Which, but yeah, yeah, we do have. Uh, we use that uh, pigment, so it's it's interesting. Um, so you know all this stuff about pigment. When did you start learning about pigment, James? I'm just curious. Well, back in, um, let's see, to make it real short, uh, back in, um, I was born in 1979. 
So my uh, family owned a lacquer house, and they actually sold their, the lacquer house. They sold to Valspar back in 1979, and they they just sold their clientele and their customers and their formulas, and they kept this facility. So my dad's been at the same facility since like 19, I don't know, 1976 or something. And so um, he um, he still we're still there at the same facility making the uh, pavement dispersions now. Um, right on. Yeah, that combines so, for a lot of a lot of experience in your life with um, yeah, yeah, and uh, no, one, one good thing I, I want to uh, throw out there just to, to let um, the public know is that um, something that I really take a lot of pride on as, as being an owner of um, raw pigments is that. Our consistency. I, I know it's it's hard to um, give any va- like any anything any, any valuability to to me saying hey we want to be the most consistent pigment uh, pigment ink company in the in the world and um, I take a lot of pride on having each bottle look the same. We'll throw batches away if it's not the same because you, you that that comes with only time and since we're new it's going to be very difficult for people to to see that, you know, but five years from now, when we have this conversation, uh, it'll, it'll take on a whole different meaning. You know, people will be able to say, yeah, hey, the bottle I have from, from that I bought today is the same as the bottle I bought five, five years ago, you know, and I think that the person that does all the quality control work for, um, for my family company um, is the same people who um, are doing the QC work for raw, raw inks. So yeah. So, yeah, so that, right. that's something that, that, that I think that's something that, that sets us a little bit apart is that we um we actually we have the background of making the product from from raw from the powder to the to the liquid and um and we have some of the same people that do do it the work there at the processing um facility that also working in our clean room. You know. Yeah. And then um, another thing that I found interesting too is uh, not only like has it been pretty cool finding about your knowledge on the pigments, but you 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 pick the pigments for that were ideal that you you know that are less likely to to fade over time, which I thought was cool. And I also thought was quite interesting the the choice of acrylic free pigments that um, you feel and you've been very passionate about um, since we started as being better, you know. Absolutely. Um, back in, um, in to the early 2000s, our first um, ink company that came to my to, to my family's color house to, to actually ask him to make t- tattoo ink. Um, he didn't know what he was doing, and he was just trying to um, make something similar to the big guys. You know, he says, "Hey, th- this is he brought us. He brought in samples to us of intense of eternal of." um fusion of some of the big uh, some of the big guys you know and he said hey i want you i want to make this i want to make this and, and so we had our chemists look at it and we had them smell it and we did a lot of r&d and we figured out that, that everybody was using acrylic and um they're in water base you have two different forms you have a water-based emulsion and you have a water-based um acrylic so you don't have a, a, a ton of choices you have two and for some reason everybody has chosen to go with the water-based acrylic. And there, there are some good reasons to go with that. It dries faster, it dries quicker. It, um, some, some people think that in the very beginning stages that it could possibly look a little brighter, um, but over time it dulls out. So I was just really, 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 uh, Lauren, it was really, really odd to me that, that nobody um, even tried to do the non-acrylic side. It was like everybody, I mean, every single person that I opened it, because you could smell it when, when you're professionals and you've been around it your whole life. You can, as soon as you open up a bottle, you can take a whiff of it and you can smell it like, boom, and you can tell, you. I can tell you, well, you, you know, you, you sat with the, the uh, chemist that we have and he showed you how it flakes and how it smells and he showed you right away. I mean, I think you're pretty much an expert now, and you can tell if it's acrylic or not just just by spending yeah. 15 minutes with him, you know. <laughs> that is so, so yeah. So yeah, so that, that, that's, so you, that's yeah. We uh we were talking before a little bit about some kind of like sneak peeks at colors, and so uh, we've been 
talking to Michael for a really long time and um, I had asked about a few colors and I don't know where the rabbit hole began, maybe our camaraderie, but with that, some of the colors that you've developed, um, for example, we, we don't have to say the name yet. It's a pretty cool name. But some of these colors uh, were developed by liquid samples, which is just like a phenomenal thing. And I'm really happy that we've been able to do that. But um, so kind of the gist is we decided what colors we wanted and they were matched perfectly, identically. The viscosity was consistent. And um, Michael, I'm going to put you back on with James to kind of talk about some of the colors that you uh, have been making. Yeah, so so Michael, so he he he, I was hoping he was going to pick ten or twelve um, colors to master. I mean, uh, that was a, a bad dream because as soon as we got to go an, big. Uh, if you give an artist a, an opportunity to say, hey, you know, pick around, you know, ten to to twenty colors of these, you know, they're, they're going to pick fifty colors, you know. So so he automatically he sent me back. I think about thirty colors he wanted to match. And um, it's 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 no joke to matching colors. I mean, especially if you want to have them dead on matches, it takes a, it takes a lot of work. But we're just very fortunate that the that the person who um, that works for us behind the scenes has been working for my family company for um, over seventeen years, and he he's just very very good at um, uh, matching colors. I mean, he could knock out three colors in one day, you know, in an eight hour shift. Where some some chemists i mean even for for me we when um when i i, I owned a uh, one time i owned a water-based wood flooring company and i would want stain maps i mean it would take these guys three three weeks three months i mean it would take them forever i mean you go to sherman williams or you go to some of these large paint companies and you ask them to get matched something if the color computer can't match it which it never does exactly i mean it gets you in the ballpark but then you have to make adjustments you know and we figure if you if you get two ads, if, you, if it's you to so close to where you only have to make two little adjustments by by eye, then that that's good, you know. Um, now that nowadays the, the 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 customers they they can't they've been spoiled by computers, so if the computer doesn't come out perfectly to what they want it, then the, these young kids and these young young chemists that they, they don't they don't spend any time on it because it's almost like you know how the way things are nowadays with the, the younger crowds, you know, the millennials or the, the people that um, they, they, they get things are just, it's just, a, just a, a different world. Not bad, not worse. I mean, I, I guess if I was a millennial, I'd probably feel the same way, you know? Um, hey, I think, um, I think I'm on the border of, of being a millennial. millennial. Yeah. But yeah, the, 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 yeah. 88. The quest <laughs> for perfection is kind of the thing that I think, uh, you know, sets us apart. So, um, Mike, I, I'm curious about, you know, if your manager's still around is yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lance. He's right. Yeah. He's right here. Yeah. So if you want to point out that red that you guys, um, had been working on with, uh, with, uh, James, you want to see this red or do you want to see the red in his, uh, in his body? Uh, let's, go, let's yeah, let's see it. So here's the red and it's nice, uh, bottled format, no label, of course, because that's not that revealed just yet, but, uh, the red is right in here. Well, we've got the labels that have been they've been shown. Lauren Lauren showed them out already. Oh, right? um, like we just didn't um, release like the name and all that stuff. But yeah, I have I have them right here. But yeah, let's see it in the skin. Yeah, it's right right here. This is the uh, we used the combination of the new pink we got going coming out that uh, James uh, got for us already. So we have a nice pink. It's it's a uh, it's a combination of. This this pink and this red. Okay. We have them both in here. Um, everything else is basically just like a like a pink, but that's that's the red there. Um, on that, I think I sent you a Deadpool um tattoo I did. Yeah, that, that was amazing. Yeah, the, the red is 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 top notch. Yeah, that was cool. That, that looked good. That red looked really really well on that on that tattoo. I got it, man. It looked really well. Hey. Pat yourself on the back there, buddy. <laughs> uh, I think it was I was thinking it was the person that was putting it into the skin. Yeah, it's maybe a combination of all three of us, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that worked. It's my it's it's a skin, guys. It's a skin. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's Lance. I mean, he has a, a sexy Australian accent too, so that kind of helps out a little bit too. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah um, let, me, um, let me share with you guys some some um here i'm gonna spotlight myself some fun little picture so who's this that, who's that stud <laughs> believe in oneself is that's the shirt we were talking about but um we yeah, did this was several months several months ago um the process was really cool we we had a lot of like tedious little work to do um, and kind of figuring out exactly that was actually all you guys, but I, uh, I enjoyed being along for the ride. It, it was, it was a, it was a project that, um, that I think we, we all had fun with because um, Lauren has an eye for, for what we need. I think James and, and myself, all three of us have an eye for what we could expand upon. Uh, the groundwork was already laid with like what 48 colors. They're already awesome. Just some nice like in-between tones were missing. We were able to go through all the, you see the samples on the, on the bed there. Um, it's a tattoo bed, um, massage bed, whatever you want to call it. Um, just laid out and going through, picking the correct shade, you know, hitting back with James, making sure that, you know, we got the correct uh, values and, and just go time. He mixed them up, bottled them up, then let me play with them. I mean, it's, it's been awesome. Definitely. I, I, oh. There's. The, the other shirt, uh, you, you just have it here. The other one is All I Do Is Win that we released. So if you want to rewind back a little, little bit, that was another motivational uh, saying for the shirt. Lance just told me in his little, uh, his little accent here, whispered to my ear. <laughs> That's <laughs> he said, he said all, all I do is win. <laughs> right, what are you going to do up the rest of uh, his arm there? Do you have a plan for that? Um, uh, well, we're going to fill in the, the rest. Uh, so we have this nice uh, cr um, chrysanthemum here in the middle. We're going to hit that up nice. Uh, what are we going to put on there? What color? Maybe one of these uh, nice new ones that we have here that we haven't tried out. Yeah, something bright. Um, prob probably uh, maybe like a. Maybe something like yeah, this. Yeah, actually that. Maybe looks... something like this. I, I don't know. You know. Blue on the, maybe blue on the in, pink on the out. Opposite. Yeah, or maybe even pop one of these in here. I, I don't know. Might, might yeah. Be. So um, before, like, before we get too crazy, I uh, I gotta <laughs> say we were talking about naming the pigments, and James and I were talking about it, talking about it. But how have can you? You told me your wife. Uh, can you tell everybody about how where that strike of creativity and the naming convention kind well, of. Um, my wife uh, wow. makes her own, her own incense and she has like 110 fragrances. So uh, as, as she would get um, new fragrances in, we would, you know, what should we call this? You know, you can't, you can't call it like, you know, uh, polo for men. You got to give it its own name. It has to have its own, its own, you know, identity in her lineup. So uh, we would just go through and, and uh, like, I think I told you, uh, we did a Paris Hilton um, perfume and we called it porn star. You know, so, I mean, that's a little throwback, you know, years ago when that all happened. So, like, just little things like that, just to try to be creative and, and you know, give a twist to some names. That's awesome. Yeah, some of, the, mm -hmm. some of them are pretty cool. Sorry, James, didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, no that's, that is cool. That is cool. You can, yeah, you can integrate, you can integrate the two, the two uh, different industries, you know, with the names. Yeah, just try, just try like, you know, like, like basically the, the biggest thing was like the new colors that, that we're formulating that we're trying to choose. Um, what can we call it? And like I said, the one time, like, should we call one like, you know, extra red? Like that doesn't make sense. Like, let's give it like something that is going to make you want to use it. You know, like obviously the colors are already great, but like, oh, I grabbed red off the shelf or, you know, or, you know, like, let's give it like a, a cool name where like people can identify this raw pigment is this color, you know? We're gonna, we're gonna release one of the names right now because one of the names that um, I was going over with recently with you, uh, Mike, was uh, it was called a, it was a red that I asked about and it was called the it was called the name of a wine. Are we still going with that? If if you want, yeah, it, it was either either that or, or Lauren, uh, Lauren, or you. You guys need to tell me what because I need to get that name. <laughs> oh <laughs> man, it's on the spot. Did you want to call it after the witch or do you want to call it after the wine? It's up to you. It's you guys' call. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's we can talk about that later for sure because I don't remember exactly what it was, but I like the I like the concept of giving a color its own like um character in a way. I know that it's not, I mean, uh, I don't know, we've spoken about different naming conventions and stuff like that, but it, it was fun to um to kind of 
be more creative with this. Yeah, I think some of the new names are pretty cool. I think people yeah. are going to like them. I think definitely going to like them, especially some of the names that some of the new greens that are coming out. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think it's cool. It's not like something that I ever had a, a chance to do. So it was, thank you for that. That was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Be a little immature, you know, we'll be a little kickback and be a little immature and uh, throw some some crap around and then see what sticks, you know, and, and we, we have a, we have an awesome selection. I, I don't know how many more colors you have uh, waiting there, James. I know we, we, we put, we chose a couple, uh, but you know, right now mm -hmm. I have. Yeah. I think we have like, I don't know, 25 or 26 new colors that are coming out, um, um, coming out. And I think we're going to, are we going to, we're going to drop one a week starting uh, two weeks from now or starting the, how are we? Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Start right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah we should we should choose one of your favorites and then um yeah we actually before we probably have a few more minutes to chat here i'll check to see if there's any questions from the viewers here but we've got our brand new labels that we're pretty excited about um james was saying just before i don't know if you have them in your hand yep yeah. <laughs> me too I, uh, I was taking some cool pictures for the website uh so yeah, yeah. these are really Cool. I uh, um, the design the gray process. wash ones seem really popular. The gray wash ones, even even with amongst our stuff in their clean room, and the people that work outside of the clean room, and that bottle, they they really love they really love the and that um, bottle. There you go. They yeah, really, this they really yeah. love this bottle, this label. This label in particular was designed, and um, the color choice was by Litos Art, and he's just brilliant in every single thing that he does. But he had uh, suggested using a French gray label. So I thought it would be a nice surprise for him to to go with his thoughts, and um, I'm really thankful for that. I really love that. Lidos. And then we have a white one too, if you if you have that. Yeah. And Lidos is the man. I love Lidos. He's he's, he's a cool cat. He, yeah. he's a, he's I don't have a white hot. label. I don't have a, a French gray label. No. I have, I have the white label. Just give me a <laughs> second. I'll stop you right. But yeah, I uh, I. Uh, I'm going to check to see if we have any questions. Um, you know, it's been really cool working with you, Michael. I have to say, I, I appreciate your enthusiasm. Um, you. Just like, you know, collaborating with someone across the country is a new fun type of thing since COVID, right? Like we can't really, you know, yeah. we had a year or more of time. I mean, I'm pretty I sure. Gotta, I got to yeah. give, uh, oh, give Lauren, I got to give Lauren some props on this. She threw this together pretty, pretty damn quick. Put it in front of the camera. <laughs> Where's it? A little bit too. Oops. <laughs> it's all right. There, there we go. Where, there where, where, right there. Yeah, and that looks like I don't know which black that is, but uh, if it's Raven Black, that is uh, cool. That's uh, Tobias. Tobias, I should say. Um, a lot of great artists have been suggesting that from the from South America. So. Yeah, this one actually is the Vanta Black. Oh, okay. Right on. Vanta Black is great. Mamba Black is great. Raven Black is great. <laughs> yeah. Now, see, we were thinking, I was talking to some of the our, some of our, 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 our home artists, and, our, and I was actually thinking about coming out with maybe one more black, something in between the, the Vanta and the um, Pitch Black, if, if necessary. Some we'll, we'll discuss later. Right on. <clears throat> so, Mike, um, do you have any future plans coming up? uh for traveling or anything like that that um you want to share with us for the end of the year once we get um well personally speaking once i get like a good handle on the, the clothing drop uh for for uh, devoted then we'll be moving ahead with uh with fall i think we hit the fall convention scene get that guy on the circuit and get out there and, and you know support you know and and show love i definitely want to hit up a couple like you know obviously in florida you know hit up a couple of here but um with everything getting better you know our environment changing you know get out there and just uh get back to working you know and, and doing our thing yeah okay so um we have about 15 minutes left so we're going to go through some of the uh, questions from our comments so um i'm not sure if jeremy's still there uh but he's asking for you james uh can you comment on orange pigment uh, Jeremy says, I understand that it's the least light fast. Is there a way to make a pure orange that stays? Um, and then also I'll just say thanks to Sean that we're not using twist tops. No, we had a, a mold made uh, 
because a lot of people do use the twist tops, but ours the with the flip top, they the top does stay covered. But yeah, um, back to the comment on the orange, James. Um, yes, um, there yeah. is a way to, to, to make it um, more light fast and to make it stay. It's a it's a how, how much how much mixture of um, how much white we can get away with putting into it. There's almost um, I don't want to say 99 percent, but I would say about 85 percent or 75 to 85 percent of all the colored pigments have 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 a, a bit of white in them for opacity to get them to stay. Because if you're using just a pure pigment, you get it gets translucent. It doesn't have any opacity. It doesn't cover up very well uh, when it um, stays. So so a lot of these. Um, go through um you go through just you, you you'd be shocked how much white you go through compared to how much black you think you would go through a lot more black because you do all the outlining you do this you, you do uh, the black and gray guys and all that stuff a company the size of the, the biggest company in the in the world buys just as much white as it does black which is kind of ironic you know and it's because of um of the white um is, is like um, how do I say this? It's like it's like the carrier. The white's the carrier. So um, if you um, are ha having issues with the white stain, I mean the green, the orange stain. Excuse me. Um, I, I I would take the the best light fastness, which somebody like I could tell you um, which which pigment number would be the best, or I could make it for you, if, or if I could tell you which one of mine is, we probably we already do make one like that. I could tell you, um, I, I'd like you to definitely try one of ours compared to what you're currently using and tell me if, um, if, if you can, you, you should be able to considerably see the, the difference. I mean, considerably see the difference between that. I went through the pigments. Um, I've been working on this for about eight years, eight and a half years now. Um, it's been a tedious, tedious time consuming thing. Um, people actually, my own friends and family and then they laugh at me to this day at family picnics and so oh we're still doing that tattooing thing huh oh yeah geez dude what are you gonna give up give up on that you know i mean this and that you know they they joke with me about it because they think that uh, they think i've wasted a lot of time uh, and they don't understand how far that uh, we've actually come and how far how, how much how long it's taken but it's been worth it you know we i done i feel like we've done things the right way and it's um it's going to pay off, you know. Um, and anyhow, um, I, I think if we have an orange that will stay. Um, so with that being said, I understand where he's coming from. The orange is one of those tricky ones, but I, I, I definitely strongly believe that we have an orange that that um, could solve his problems. Right on. Um, and also, I was going to say to Sean, if you're watching, um, the we do have the the big bottle that you held up, James. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, the big bottle that you hold up for, for Sean, that was that's a twist top. Um, so right. we, we phased out all those twist tops because they are, you know, I'll, I'm not going to, they just, in comparison to something like this is our flip top for raw. Um, we've got these, if you guys can see. Much better. Yeah, um, but in the eight ounce right now, we do have a twist top. top. So yeah. that, that would be. Eight ounce, yeah, but that will be something that will be changing once we, um, once we sell a bit, a little bit more pigment, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a big investment. And um, as soon as I, I'm able to do it, trust me, we will. We, we will. We, Lauren and myself and all the people that work for us will still be driving the same car that we're driving now before we, um, until we get the right cap on the bottle. I'm on, glad on, you said that, man. On the eight ounce, though, I mean, I feel like a, a flip top might be a little bit more messier because with a twist top, you can actually aim towards the cap such a big bottle there's too many pluses to if you think about it there's too many pluses to it with the, the the flip cap it stays more sterile you know it's not always exposed sure you no know? i mean i i feel like there's too many positives to um um it's better with leaking you know for shipping i mean it's just there's just too many positives not to use um a, a flip cap in my opinion i don't know how you feel lauren or or whatnot but that's how i feel yeah that's how i honestly feel the same in, in terms of explosions uh i remember some really funny stories about twist tops of people going through an entire airport with with leaky bottles and stuff like that and obviously the the cat being exposed so yeah 
But yeah, um, does anybody else have any questions? If if you do, um, you know, I'm we're we have a couple more minutes. If not, you can always leave us a message at uh, raw pigments info at rawpigments.co. Uh, Michael Biller, obviously, if you have any questions, I'm sure you'd be fine for a DM about anything tattoo related. As always, so I have, um, I have, an, announcement. I have an announcement to make before we get off. So go ahead, Michael. That question on that orange is uh, Tang. If they want to use a good raw orange, Tang is the one that 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 will that I've seen sit Tang, inside. Tang and a Agent Orange are, are the two I would say to look at. Yeah. Right on. And then thanks, Sean. He says I don't like the twist tops. The pigment gets uh, dries up and clogs them. Um, another thing too since we have a couple minutes um, to touch on with the acrylic free that we kind of just really touched on, but um, the, the nice thing that it doesn't um, flake up and dry out in your caps and bottles. Um, so if you haven't tried an acrylic free line, that's also a big, huge plus. Um, but, yeah. Plus it doesn't give it a white milky film as it's, as it's healing in the healing process. The first few days, if you pay attention, a lot of people that I talk to, a lot of the guys who do the poke system, um, a lot of a, lo a lot of people who are um, who've been around for longer than fifteen years that um, that I've spoken to when I speak to them uh, at conventions and I, and I express some of my concerns with the acrylic, they immediately say, "Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, that that white film, that white milky film. Oh, yeah, I, I would love just to get away from that. I had no idea that you could do that. You know, I said, yeah, and they're like, geez, you know, I mean, uh, I." A guy that I just mentioned uh, recently that I met at the Hawaii show who's got a pretty big following that I was telling you about, Lauren, that I really yeah. like. He writes names on the caps and stuff like that. He um, he He's just so, so head over heels the fact that there's actually another option out there other than, like, the same old, you know, acrylic option, you know. I mean, if you guys are sick, uh, and if I if I wasn't the greatest artist in the world, and I was uh, an average artist or a little bit above average, and I and I had to buy it, and I was doing color, I was having to throw away a third of my colors like every three years or every two and a half years because they get dry at the bottom of them. I'd be livid. I'd be pissed like that. I was having to throw away my hard-earned cash, you know. And with the, with the raw pigments, you don't have to do that. I mean, I know there's an expiration date and um, I'm not telling you not to follow the rules because you definitely need to follow the rules. But um, I mean, you, you don't have to worry about the, the ink as long as you close the, flip the caps. That's another thing. You just have to flip the caps closed after you're done using them. They'll be good just as now, just as good as they are today. As they are from four years from now or two years from now or, you know, two months from now. And they're not going to dry out and turn into a hard rock, like I mean, like, like any other acrylic products do. You know, there, there's, I mean, there, there's a lot of people who uh, I know there's a fun account who's doing something similar to us, but on a lot smaller scale, and he says some pretty um, brandish things that I, I wouldn't say, but um, but it, it's there, there's a big difference, and there's a there's a definitely a, a positive reason to. Um, to try out the raw, you know. Sweet. Um, so uh, before we uh, disconnect you guys, um, Michael, can you uh, tell us a little bit more? Together tonight, we decided to do a cool little giveaway for anybody who's watching. We'll uh, contact the, the winner after of some devoted aftercare. So yeah. thank you for doing that. Uh, Ricardo commented before that he thought it was cool that you developed it um, because of your son. So that was really awesome. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it. we'll be doing that along with some raw pigments um, for, for somebody who's watching. So thank you for, for offering for us for to, doing that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. Thank you for, for allowing me to do that. Take a little bit of this yeah. time you know, to spotlight my stuff, you know? Yeah, and then um, James, thank you as well for being on. Is there anything else that you'd like to add uh, before we uh, disconnect? Yeah, I do, I do have something for Lauren. And, um, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, Maybe they'll go ahead to do the Chicago show. Okay, cool. Right on. I was uh, I was hoping to because I, I live in Wisconsin, so we're gonna um, yeah, we're gonna be in a lot of places. We're a little bit uh, you know, it's we haven't traveled in a really long time. We're going to the Tattoo Collectors Expo in Dallas by you know that's that's coming up in 
the end of summer. We've also got Golden State Tattoo Expo in September. Uh, we'll have uh, an event in New Zealand at the end of October, as well as the Brussels International Tattoo Convention in November. You got a lot of work on your flight. Yeah, so a lot of traveling. I'm sure that, um, you know, there's, if anyone is outside of the U.S. while watching, things are different everywhere. So I'm assuming we'll have to play it by ear, you know, especially. No, I'm just saying that you're going to have a lot of work, a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah. We both are, but I mean. All right. Well, I will, on that note, I thank you guys um, for coming on. And anyone, if you have any questions, uh, Michael Biller, um, M. Biller Devoted on Instagram. And then we have Raw Pigments as well. And as always, we really appreciate you for joining the Reinventing the Tattoo community. Um, it's been a really great experience to learn, um, uh, just to learn under Guy Aitchison and Gabe Ripley. So I thank them for the opportunity to be here as well. And for everybody else, enjoy your Memorial weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks.